leave a comment and um, let's continue to talk about this. So why do you think people do not leave abusive relationships? You meet a lady, she's a doctor. She's having kids. She's having a good job. She's in a marriage. She's being tortured. I don't know. Maybe it's just that you don't know the whole story because I never understand why anyone who wants to be in a marriage like that, especially if a slap can take you to your grave, just a slap and you hit your head on the cupboard and that's it. So why do people, men and women stay in abusive relationships? Why? You said you read my article. I will just highlight. Uh, I will highlight three aspects or four. You have the fear of the unknown. <laughs> yeah. People are. So never, never wait. No, it better pass, Angel. Yeah. No, no. That is it. The fear of the unknown keeps people in, in uh, you know, toxic relationships. Low self-esteem as well. Low self-esteem is a problem because you like, excuse me, you need validation. I need to be married to be validated. Be it a man or a woman, you know. What would people say if I go? What would people, excuse me, what would people say when you die? No, sir, they would type this. right in peace. Why well, God are in love with you? No, seriously. Seriously. And then, as I said before, People don't even know. People don't even have knowledge of what a healthy relationship should look like. That is a problem. That's they they grew important. up knowing nothing else but what they're doing. They grew up knowing that abuse is normal. The ladies, the girls, saw their mothers being abused at the state. The boys saw their father abuse their mom. So for them, it's just like it's a generational it's a cycle. cycle it's a boy. cycle of the things yeah it's a cycle that is continuing but somebody needs to stand up and say no not every man who grew up in an abusive uh, home is abusive i've seen men who grew up in non-abusive homes who are abusive and this is because you know like they think that women um how do i say it women are second class people Women should be, women should be. I have a friend, I have a couple of friends, not, let me say, who were, who, were, who were breadwinner. I said it before. They were physically abused by their partners. They were the breadwinners, but they were physically abused. Low self-esteem. That brings Low me self -esteem. back to that. Yeah. Low self-esteem. Oh, he will only kill me in this house. I'm not going anywhere. And I'm like, like I said, but what's the problem? He will kill you and will type right, uh, rest in peace. Yeah. That is it. We will type rest in peace and you will be gone. Another woman will come and raise your kids. The dreams you had for your kids will never be realized because some women, very few women, like some of us, will raise your kids like our own kids. Very few of them out there. Because a woman will come in and start maltreating your kids. This is some of the things women should start putting in mind. I will not die because I will, I had to rather raise my kids out of a broken marriage than in a broken home I'd rather yeah because those kids just like you were saying relations. yeah those kids end up broken but that's another it's reason why people stay they're staying for the kids that's an excuse i'm staying for the kids i yeah. if i leave now who is going to that's a man if i leave now i have to be working all the time who is going to take care of them i cannot leave her she needs that's to take it. i need someone to take care of my kids come on yeah. just like you were saying and the cycle of unhealthy relationship goes on because a child grows up yeah. seeing you guys fighting endlessly and you think that that child is a broken child yeah it's a broken child so for me staying for the kids is one crazy excuse i don't know maybe they'll say it's, it's a crazy generation woman talking but i'm like if you're saying it for the kids and you end up fighting every day what do you think you're teaching the kids what do you think you're teaching them? Because children, they don't care about your words. It's what you do. It's the movie you're playing for them. That's what they're watching. And they internalize it. They internalize it. And when they grow up, and that's how they'll act. That same movie, they'll act it all out. That is it. So staying for the kids is one of the reasons why I'm still wondering, like, are you serious? Staying for the kids? Yeah. 
you know that makes me uh, that reminds me of a video i saw where uh, i saw where this woman i think it's i think it's a movie where this girl comes back to the mom's house uh, saying that she saw condoms in the husband's um in the husband's uh, box and whatsoever yeah. mm -hmm. and the mom is telling her to go back to go back and she's like no mom i can't do you know what do you know what i saw I your father's say, bag come again yeah did you yeah that something like that so imagine excuse me so it goes to tell you that our mothers want us to continue the cycle of abuse which they endure i'm sorry my mommy it's like i tell her i tell them sometimes what you endure i can't endure 10 percent of it i'm sorry i have a job and it's not because I have a job that I have to disrespect my husband. My husband will not disrespect me. I will not tolerate it. It has a limit. And this is what I preach. That is why I talk of healthy relationships. You have to draw healthy boundaries in relationships. You have to draw healthy boundaries. Whether you are economically empowered or not, you need to be able to tell your partner, I am sorry. Even if you are not econ economically empowered, you work 24 seven taking care of the house. That's your own. Can they trans, can they uh, trans, uh, how do you say it? Can you uh, put a financial um, tag on that? Can yes. you actually quantify yeah. the they, work yeah. and pay you yeah. for it? No one yeah. can be can paid they, for yeah, that. Quantify and put, no, they should, they should stop. People should stop saying you are a housewife, you are a liability. Yes. I clean. If it were a housemaid, you have to pay a housemaid. Mm. If it were a housemaid, you have to pay a housemaid. So take it, quantify the 24 7. I stay home, taking care of cooking for you, cleaning no for breaks. you. No breaks. No, no breaks. Holidays. No holidays. No break. No holidays. It's a 24 7 job. Can you put it? That's it. So for me, it's like any person who stands up and says a woman is a liability, it's a non entity. It's a non entity. Cooking is not her job. She's not, she's not your housemate. She cleans for you. She takes care of your children. She bears your children. You know, like there's so much that these women do. I have a friend who's a PhD holder. She made that choice to be a housewife. And when I asked her, is a husband who came running to me, say, hey, Bella, you know your friend, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, okay, let me talk to her. And she told me, my sister, I've made that choice. I want to see my last kid go to secondary school and then I can go back to the job. I don't, you know, like that is it. And you know, like the, the husband was like, I don't want you tomorrow say that, oh, I have imposed on whatsoever. So, you know, he's the one who was running and looking for help that the wife had abandoned everything and said she chose to be a housewife. It's a matter if you choose to be a housewife, that is different. You yeah. know, I put this on an empower a woman platform and people were insulting this woman and I laughed. And I'm like, no. I say, I it's put choice. it in quotes. She chose the husband is not. And people, why did she go to school? Yeah. I've put, the story was out there. She made that choice to take care of her kids until the last one is 10 years. That's going yeah, to we, we, going we to should learn to respect school. people's choices. And if personally, I think, personally, I think if, if you see a woman make a choice like that, personally, if I, I, I'm ever to make a choice like that, it's because I trust that my husband is not going to struggle and he's not going to insult me in the process. Because that's what a lot of women are afraid of. What if yeah. I quit this job and he cannot take care of me like I want to be taken care of? What if I quit this yeah. job and he rocks it in my face every day? If I don't buy bread, he won't eat. But if you have a man who doesn't take you down that road and he respects your choice, it's not like you're jobless. Housework is enormous, especially if you have dependent kids. I have three, yeah. so I know what I'm talking about. It's hard. So sometimes women choosing to work is not because you want to prove that you can earn money. It's just because if you don't work, yeah, better not go see you. That's true. That's so true. I just think we should, we should respect women... people's choices. Respect people's choices. She's we made should. that choice. We yeah. Should. She has a plan. You don't know because the plan for her life. She has a plan. You have some men who have money, but they're so stingy with their money. They never even give the women pocket money. Yeah. No, but oh, God. you have to share. You know, like you, a woman, how many times have you given something gift. to your husband? If you are not working. Let me tell you something. This is a mistake a lot of women do. 
you are not working, but you're, if for those who, you know, like whose partners give them money, mm-hmm. you have to think of, if he gives you 1,000 francs, for example, I'm just quoting one, yeah. let me take 1,000. Yeah, take 200. When you're going to the market to buy your pencil eye and your lipstick, buy your lipstick and pencil eye for 800. With 200 francs, buy him toothbrush. Bam. Yeah, buy him toothbrush. Buy him something to show that at least you care about him. Yeah. Don't only take the 1,000 and spend it all on you. This is part of building healthy relationships. Yeah. It's part of, you know, like it's part, he gives you yes, but what are you giving in exchange? Hmm. Some people will say, oh, I sleep with him. Don't you enjoy it as well? Question. Yeah, because Don't women are on that, that entitlement, like they're doing the man a favor. No. By doing no. sex is a favor no. for the man. For it's me, a favor. we have to build healthy relationships. And, you know, like looking after each other is very fast here. Yeah, sharing. to building a healthy relationship. It means that, for example, I am working, my husband is working. Mm-hmm. At the end of the month, he has a gift. It could be a shirt. I could even go to the friperie, get this uh, premier choix. Mm-hmm. You know, like, come and wash an iron. And darling, I, wash an iron wash very iron well. Say, I, I told this shirt and gave you, uh, you know, like, and I thought of you. You yeah. demand to, it's not because your woman, you know, things like that. You can go somewhere. You have women who come to st- uh, to, to offices with stuff. Mm. get some of it you can get something it could be a slippers take a slippers to your wife it's not because she's working and earning more than you gift mm. her buy some rapa they rapa then they sell on five thousand for straight buy it mm. you, and give it to this is it you need to learn to build healthy relationships it's very sharing important. love without sharing yeah. is zero there is yeah. no love without yeah. sharing and sharing yet does yeah. not have to be like i was saying you, the woman, thinking you're at that point where you just keep receiving. That's not how it works. Sharing yeah. is supposed to be two-way. It's yeah. not like you're trying to outdo another person, but just do what you can. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, I, I think, I don't know, maybe because we digressed a little for from the reasons why people stay in abusive relationships. You mentioned lack of self-esteem. We mentioned um, staying for the kids. Yeah. We mentioned fear of the unknown. So is there anything else you like society, to add? What society would say, we need validation from society. We stay in marriage. Mm, yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you so very much for that. Yeah. Okay. Oh, my people. Right here. I have a list. A list from Queen Bell and a list from other people um, I've been listening to and talking to. And this is the list I came up with, just to add to what Queen Bell is talking about. Yeah, we we talk about the fear of the unknown, but we have to take a leap of faith. If your life is in danger, you have to take a leap of faith. You have to take a leap of faith for the betterment of your children, because of course, we also think about them as a mother. I would definitely be thinking about my children. So we also have this issue of, I can't leave because of the kids. But then I ask myself, um, is it better to raise a child in a broken home or to raise that child in a broken marriage or to raise that child from a broken home? What For me, the broken home is healthier than a broken marriage because there's no point um, displaying all this violence in front of the children and modeling this kind of love that is not correct before them because this is what they carry on and that's why we talk about um, a generational problem that we also need to fight against. So apparently we also have issues like the cycle of abuse, the beat you, the pet you, the apologize, the beat you, the pet you, the apologize. <laughs> and we also have the battered woman syndrome, you know, at some point after going through all the pain, they start justifying, oh, he is doing this to me because I did this. If I didn't do this, he wouldn't do this to me. Um, they start justifying the abuse of the partner. So all of this strange things you see that the person ends up brainwashed especially if their self-esteem has been a hit they really hit rock bottom and they need they need a lot of encouragement to be able to pick themselves up you know and of course financial dependence is one of the main issues why people stay in these relationships and that's why there's a lot of talk about empowerment especially for women women empowerment is on and on and on because um experts and research has proven that one of the main reasons for fin- not the only reason but one of the main reasons for um, domestic violence is financial 
uh, and dependence. And of course, one of the main reasons why people or women do not leave toxic relationships is because they're financially dependent on the abuser. And that's why we encourage women to be able to make that choice, to find something to do with themselves and get empowered somehow. It is very, very important. Um, I just love our discussion today talking about healthy boundaries because sometimes we are not so intentional about healthy boundaries and proper communication and building healthy relationships because if we really start on this basis, this foundation, then I think our families are going to go through a lot of healing, you see. So I'm personally a strong advocate for building healthy relationships, relationships with, the, with great foundational values, you know. We just have to bring in our fair share to talk about these things, not because we are experts of any kind, but just to say, let's just put our, our wisdom together, um, put our voices together so that our families may be able to be strong, so we can raise strong and uh, um, loving children, you know, not broken children who become broken adults. So for a healthy society, we all have to strive to raise kids. Um, in loving and healthy homes so that it can eventually, we can eventually rid our society of all forms of abuse because some of the people who carry out abuse have either been victims of abuse or um, they've just been witnessing so much abuse that they do not even know what a real loving family is. So we really, really, really have to work on the family, which is the primary place where people grow up. Mm -hmm. So... As parents and as couples, we have to model the right attitude to our children so that when they get up or when they grow up, they too will be able to leave to replicate this kind of attitude. So I just want you to join us today to say record to gender-based violence, record to domestic violence. Let's put our hands together, work hard to make sure that we destroy this evil in our society. And of course, let's keep praying for God to heal broken families and restore the love that has been lost. Next stop, we are going to talk about something really sad. Um, it's rape, but we must talk about it. We must talk about it because just like in every other form of abuse, silence is the greatest monster that fattens um, silence is the greatest thing that fattens the monster. It makes abuse grow and spread. So as sad as it is, we still need to talk about it. We still need to talk about rape and sexual abuse, especially on children. It's so heartbreaking. So we are going to be talking about that next. And of course, we are also going to continue to talk about different issues in this series about gender-based violence and abuse. Um, Please let us know your thoughts. What do you think about everything we've raised here today? Um, leave a comment. And if there's anything you'd like us to address, please, please, please let us know. Um, send a message, an email, just anything. We just want to do this together. Always remember that on Footprints, we are all about becoming the change that we want to see in our community. And we are all about touching and changing lives. And you are an integral part of this journey. So we would love to have your say and to hear what you think about all these um, important, pertinent and very crucial issues. Thank you so much for staying to the end of our edition. Of our... Thank you so much for staying to the end of this episode today. Please like, watch and comment on this video. And if you can, share. Let's spread the word. <laughs>